Good evening, everybody. How you doing? We Paddy from across the shock, and I've got a, I've got a video I'm going to do today. I don't do notes. I do things in my head, and and look, this will maybe come out higgledy piggledy, but maybe by the end of it, you'll understand what I was trying to get at. I was watching G Ball Vision last night, one of his videos. If you don't um, subscribe to him, get over and subscribe to him. An awesome dude, really, really nice fella, and he broke down. He was he was picking his five favorite modern traditionals and as the five that he picked were amazing absolutely i think i've got three of them or similar to three of them this one he had the titanium version but he picked five knives that i couldn't fault they were all excellent knives and all at different price points and that was good because they were all at different price points but by the time he had moved past the 200 dollar mark up into the jack wolf i've got a custom here i can't remember what he had I've got a custom made by one person this year. So by the time he got to here, he couldn't he couldn't decide why he wanted to make that extra jump of a hundred dollars for a Jack Wolf. Understandable. Absolutely understandable. And and there's nothing he said was wrong. Everything he said was right because it was his opinion. And when we make videos, it's just our opinions. And, and it's you know. This is by no means am I jumping down his throat. Please do not. I wouldn't tell you to go over and see him if I didn't think his channel was brilliant. He has got a great channel. He's on the road. He's moving up. He's getting subscribers. And he'll get more because he is good. His selection of knives are amazing. Really amazing. So this is nothing to do with him. But it's I'm a slip joint collector, right? And um, there's lock and knife collectors that are by the thousands out there compared to us slip joint people. But I know for a fact that when you're doing when you're doing your own specialization for want of a better word, you're apt to pay more for something because you see the value in it. Yeah? You don't see the price, you see the value of why it's at that price. And it works exactly the same with traditional or modern slip joints. It's exactly the same. It doesn't change. These are as hard to design and to make. In fact, I think they're harder to make in some cases than just a normal locking knife because they're all most locking knives now if we're talking production wise are just the same as the same as a lot of these they're milled out they're they're ground down they're sort of tidied up and then screwed together and that's it that's the build but why the price difference now a lot of knives at the moment are common this like this one and this one are oem'd the OEM'd out to other factories to do them. So that puts the price up because you have to pay for If you're going to make one, you have to do the design. Then you have to send the design to them. Then between the two of you, as you get it to where it can be done, you know, the most, the least expensive for what you want. But you still have to pay this man who designs a knife. You still have to pay him money for the hours that he sat and designed it. Or, in Kev's case, pass it on to his mate, who's the best designer out there. And I'm only joking, Kev. Don't shout at me. Um, but, I mean, this is it. you have to pay for the design to be done. Then you have to pay for the OEM, who will pay them for that design. So you, your price has gone up before you've even struck a deal, before you've even made the knife. So then the OEM makes it. They want to make a profit on what they're making. It gets sent back to the, the person who designed the knife and sent it to them. They've got to make a profit. And then you have to feed in the costs of delivering these items, checking these items, because a lot of these um, designers only, they have to get the knives in and they have to double check everyone because their reputation is is on the line if they do it badly. So they spend hours and hours doing that. And if you add that cost into it, it makes these knives quite expensive. And especially when you get up to the higher end, because there's more checks have to go in to get them done by the OEMs and by the designer himself. The design diagram that goes to the OEM from somebody like Ben, and I'm just using him because it's the one that's sort of in everybody's, you know, speaking at the minute. His diagrams are to the thousands of an inch, I'm sure. They are absolutely amazing diagrams. So I'm told. So I can only go by what I'm told. Now, these knives are made really well and they're made to a great standard. 
But as you get up on that line, it's more important that the the hands-on goes into these knives because you're jumping from 200 to 300. And that's an awful lot of money for somebody to pay out for a knife. And people are not going to buy these unless they're proper, you know, not proper, unless they have got to the stage where they have enough of these but they love the the little, and it's minutiae details between this knife and this. Minutiae, 200 to 300, there's hardly a difference in them, but there is a difference. And if you're a, a, a slip joint lover, you know the difference. And it's why somebody like me, when I get something like this, and although they're, you know, their patterns, some of the pattern, most of the patterns we can relate to because we've seen them in traditional slip joints, but they're designed for this market, for this market of modern traditionals, because we want people to come into the slip joint community, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's, you know, that is just that's how we can spread our wings and get people into the that community. I'm enjoying this community, the modern traditionals, as much as I enjoy my traditionals. I mean, that's just fact. I do. I really do. I really over appreciate traditional knives. Because I just think they're the they're the ones that built the countries we have now. They're the, they're the ones that brought us up through out of the dark ages into you know this modern the modern the, the traditional knives. The older traditional knives were so modern, so useful, and especially folding ones. They became an essential part of every man's life, and that sort of thing is dying now. So to keep that alive for me is really important. And it's not only that I want to keep it alive, because that would be a lie. I enjoy the beauty of them. I enjoy feeling and using them. But when you're going up to this sort of material, you have to add price on top. And the way they're made now in OEMs. Now, the difference between this and this is simply blade steel. And I believe um, the tolerance to fit and finish in this is better than this. You know, over time, I believe this will last longer than this. Just sheerly for the, the fit and finish and the and the, the minutia between them all is better than this. So I can understand why this costs more than this. I can understand why this costs more than this. Blade steel, this is Magna Cut, which is above M390. Although none of us need either of them two for an EDC knife. We don't need them blade steels. We're doing that because we want to. It's our hobby. These are things that we like, shiny things that have expensive. I mean, when you, any hobby, when you increase what you're doing, you'll pay more. And you want to pay more because you can notice the difference between this knife and this knife. The other thing is that with these, with these first three, these are made in large batches. So this frame, the blade, will all be cut out, as these will, but they'll be cut out. And then they'll be put together with just screws. They drill the holes, put them together with screws. They're all the same size, so they fit. Do you know what I mean? They just fit. You don't have to do any other finishing. The difference between that and moving up to this kind of a, a production a production knife is that when I look at this knife and I look here along the joints, and I look here along the... Well, there's no joint here, sorry. When I look, normally it's a double bolster. Normally, when I, when I look at these, I'm looking at every little detail. Is the, the line bolster the same on both sides? Is this meeting up without... I can't get a bit of paper through it. I don't want to get a bit of paper through it. I don't want the tiny wee gap. Where this is fitted onto the titanium, look how shallow that is. Where this joins onto the titanium of the, the handle. It is perfect. There's no little tiny, you can't see a wee black gap. It's not been filled in with anything. It is fitted perfectly. When you take this knife apart on the inside, um, they're numbered. This side's numbered, that side's numbered. And them two sides will only fit this knife. So whereas this is just two slides, it doesn't matter where you get, there's just a box full of left and right hand side, you pick them up left and right, put them together, that's it. This is not the case. When they do make these, these have to go with this knife. 
So they're made, they're taken off, they do all the things they want to do, assemble a knife, put it all back together again. It's all done by hand. To get a hollow grind done professionally is more money, I believe. Maybe Kevin could help me there. But I believe to get the hollow grind, a lot of companies don't like doing the hollow grinds because it's difficult to get it so precise. Uh, no matter what the, you know, the, the cost of the knife, to get it so precise. So everything of that is then put together. All these scales, everything that's in this knife is for this knife. So it's not just a box where he picks two out. They have to be all set out separately. And then once they have done everything they need with the inside of the knife, when they put it together, then this will be put back on again because this is the only one that's going to mate up to this exactly. Then they have to haft it all. And the skill of hafting is the most underrated because when you're doing hundreds of knives or thousands of knives every day, it's very easy to get that wrong. And sometimes you'll see it with traditional knives or whatever, where there's a bit of an angle where they've hafted wrong. It is a difficult task, but it's a, it's a human task that has to be done to tie this whole package up together. So, that is ours. That's man ours on top of the machine ours that you've got to make the knife and cut the knife out. That all has to be done, but they all have to be kept separate. So it can't just be thrown into a box and then you pick two out, screw them together. And that's where the difference when you get from here up to here, it is those tiny, tiny details that make it. And the way even like this QSP, let me just show you. This is one of the best back springs I've seen on a on a, a mid-range price knife. But when you put these two up together, and I'm not knocking this, this is a cheaper knife than this. I expect this to be better. And I think that's where people forget. It's the minutia. Look where they, they made up. Look where they made up and see the difference. You can see the gaps on the side. Yeah, you can see where the join is. You can barely see it on here. That is all finished professional. That, that's... That's the difference when, when you, you, you are getting much more for your money, but it's not necessarily somebody can see it when it's just sitting in front of them, you know, as a knife. Well, it looks the same. It's got the same materials or nearly the same materials. Why does it cost? Time. Time is, is what makes the difference. The, the, the time that you have to put in to make one knife. Here's a custom knife. And I brought this out because it's the same price as this, roughly. This is a uh, Mr. Ballesteros, uh, an Italian maker, one of my favourite knives. Look at that beautiful back spring. Everything in there is beautifully flush, beautifully made. This is the same price because this man does this knife from start to finish. Now, he, he use CNC to cut things out, the water jet, all that sort of thing. He'll do it, but it's all put together by hand by one person, and he's only making one at a time, yeah? Whereas these boys that are knocking this out have to do so many a day to get their wage, do you know what I mean? But he gets the chance to do this himself to his standard. Now, do custom, custom makers make mistakes? Of course they flip and do because they're human and any human along the production line of these knives can make a mistake as well as a custom in this one there's very few mistakes but is it up to the precision of this one i would say now this is just me i think this is beautifully put together it's hafted it's so pretty it's lovely but there's some details that are just not quite up to the standard of even this knife and this is a custom and this is a production. So the reason that this, you know, it's simple. I always go back to the, if you keep, keep it simple, stupid is my motto. When I, when I look at this and I look at this, you can see, if you look up here, you can see where it joins together. Do you know what I mean? Now there's beautiful file work on this. It is absolutely gorgeous. But to be honest with you, file work like that takes about 10 minutes to a, a trained um, knife maker and I've seen it done because Ashley Harrison put a video of him doing it up on YouTube so 15 you know 15 minutes or something he can do a knife like this so that's not the expensive but that mating up where everything look at that you can't tell where that you, you just can't feel you can't see there's nothing no gaps whatsoever 
So I love this a custom knife and I absolutely love that custom knife. Wouldn't change it for the world. Don't regret paying the money for it at all. But the Jack Wolf knives that you're getting out at the minute, the, the hand finishing is the expensive part because it's, it's man hours and you have to pay for man hours. But it's that minutia that you, if you know, if you buy, you buy a, a, a Chris Reeve knives, you expect that precision and you pay the money for that precision. There's not a lot of other knives out there in the production world that can match his precision. There's knives that are going for much more expensive than his that do not match his precision. But they're costing more. And it's the same in any any walk of knife collecting. There's always ones that are going to cost more. And it's up to you whether you justify that price. If you're into the fine details, that's when I say, once you go over that 200, 250 pound, I expect a knife to be perfect. This one came and it's off-centered. Now, it's £200. I could take it all apart, try and fix it myself. I could send it back and I know where I got it would take it back and give me a new one and do all that. But it doesn't bother me that much. Not because £200 isn't a lot of money, because it's a slip joint. And that the tiny gap, it literally, there's literally no gap for the blade to go. You look down at that, there is nowhere for the blade to go. But even on the back here, when you see knives, and this is just, this is not to knock anybody for doing it. When you see um, slip joints, modern slip joints, you'll see they've got the, they always said this lovely hafted, it's rounded over, it's the Italian way, it's, you know, whatever, whatever they used to do it. It's the best way to put a knife together when it's not fitted. It's, it's just taken out of a box, put in, slapped together. And with that bevel, it means that you don't see the gaps. It helps hide the imperfections. Perfect. I paid for this with my own money. I knew what it was coming. Italian knives I paid for with my own money. This is not what I paid for my own money, but you can see that half them. That's so that when they come together, they can press fit that together, screw it up tight, and it hides little little blemishes. And that, that's there's nothing wrong with doing that. But it's that that's why the difference for me is when you step over that two hundred pound mark to me. And you get up to here, I want perfection. And that's what Jack Wolf has given me. It's given me a knife that is perfection. And no matter what anybody thinks of it, when I hand somebody this knife, or I see, you know, I handle this knife, if I see an imperfection, it would bug the life out of me. It would bug the life clean out of me. You know, blade centering. It doesn't have to be that, but it is. Everything about this is polished. Is just if you've got a right angle, it's a proper right angle. You know what I mean. Everything about it. If you've got a curve, it's completely. It's done with perfection, and you can feel no difference. When I buy a custom knife, and this is quite strange, at that same price, I don't expect at three hundred pound anyway. Once you get above that, at three hundred pound, the detail that's put into this knife. I think is better than this. Now, again, maybe that's just me. I've got a couple of knives at £300 and the fit and finish is not as good as this. And it's not that I don't love them knives. I love this knife. I mean, how could you not love that blade shape when you're a 940 man? That is just beautiful. Hand sat and rubbed. Beautiful. It really is a gorgeous. He's an amazing maker. But what I'm saying is there's there's so little difference between now a high-end, modern, traditional than a custom. <clears throat> Unless you're going up that, once you go up that road, things have to be perfect. I don't know whether I've made it clear. I mean, if you know, if you want one of these in titanium that's two hundred pound, and you're happy with what you're getting, you have got yourself an absolutely amazing knife. And if you're not a traditional person, if you're not that slip joint kind of a guy, I can understand fully why you don't want to pay the extra hundred to go up here. Because and, and, and it's exactly the same from here to here to here to here. It is just the hand, the amount of handwork has to be done. The amount the OEMs having to pay out. Of, 
they have to make the knife design. They get the the pictures, the the whatever they give them, spreadsheets of what their knives are going to be like. Some are very vague. Um, I know that for a fact. And it's the companies themselves that t- tidy it up for them. But I know with Ben, his are perfect. <laughs> and that's all I can tell you. His designs are too. He doesn't want them changed. He doesn't want anything changed in what his design is. So his mantra is sitting for hours, getting it absolutely perfect. So I, I'm, I'm coming across as a Ben fanboy, but that's genuinely not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to answer um, G-Ball last night that, you know, he, he, he was saying, you know, he couldn't justify it. And I agree, you know, I agree. If you can't justify the price of something, for goodness sake, don't buy it because you're always going to be frustrated that why did I spend that extra hundred pound? But hopefully when G-Ball gets up, he's got a few, look, he's got beautiful knives. And there'll come a time that he'd maybe buy a Jack Wolf knife. Like he said, he probably will. Um, and I hope when he gets it, he can then look back and think, I can see where the work has gone into this knife. And that's what you have to do. You have to break it down to what you can see, what's put in front of you, what's on it. Um, and now they've gone up to um, S90V. They're not charging anymore. It's the same price for S90V. Um, so, I mean... What do I mean? I mean, this is a hobby that we all enjoy. The way G-Ball put that across last night really struck home with me because there's an awful lot of, and it doesn't matter whether it's traditional or modern knives, uh, modern locking knives. Um, an awful lot of people say you're silly to spend £500. Over £200, you're not getting anything else than what you're getting under. And if you're talking about a knife that's going to cut and do your EDC, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. All of you who said pat in the back. You are absolutely right. But if you want the design, you want the fit and finish, you want that hand influence, you want that design prowess put into it, you have to pay more. Now, how far you want to pay more for and how far it goes up before it doesn't make any difference, I have no idea. I'm not up there. But I am here and this is my, I swore I wouldn't pay more than 300 for a knife again, ever. (laughs) <laughs> I beat that this week, 440. There you go. <laughs> but that's because I wanted to. That's because I wanted to. And a lot of people don't like Chris Reeves. I think they're amazing. I love my Chris Reeves knife. It's in my pocket now. I can't get rid of it. It's beautiful. And I bought it and paid for it because I love the fact that it's precision. It's not even the easiest knife to open. It's not the easiest knife to close because this is brand new, but this just is an amazing, so smooth, so precise. When you're putting the washer over the pivot in the inside, when you're putting that washer over the top of the pivot or the, the um, yeah, the washers, anything you're putting over the pivot, it is so precise. You have to get the washer exactly right or it won't slide down over it because there's no room for it to go anywhere else. I love that. I just love all that about it. And when you've taken one apart and you put it back together and it just goes back in the middle, you're not having to fancy pants about with it. I just love that. So it's not that I'm solely a slip joint person. I buy this because I know how it's made, why it's made the way it is, why it hasn't changed. Much like a Benchmade 940. Why do you want to change something that's perfect? You make a smaller one. Yeah, and it's perfect. (laughs) That's why this hasn't changed, because it's great. It's just great. And if you like precision, you're going to have to pay for it. I have plenty of knives there that will do as much. Well, they do more work than this because their blade steels are better, but they're not a Chris Reeve. There's not anything that I know of that can match this Jack Wolf collection of knives that's coming out at the minute. And yeah, you can say, oh, Paddy, you're a fanboy. But pick one up in your hand, have a look at it against something else that's anywhere near the price of it. And, and you, you can see the difference. And I just think it's a bit of a, a raw deal when there's an American boy trying to bring good products. He wants to get it made in America and he'll get there eventually. I know he will. He just hasn't been able to now that he's just started and he's getting his business off the ground. Back him rather than just knock him down. And I would say that to anybody. Tactile turn. 
They made pens. They're now making fantastic knives. They're only on maybe fifth, sixth iteration of their knives and they're knocking out something that I'm happy to pay £200 for. You know, just because they're American made doesn't mean I'm going to pay £200 because they say it's titanium and uh, um, magna cut. That's not a reason for buying a knife for me. It has to be something that excites me, turns me on. Same as this Ace Farley and this QSP. Uh, when they sent this to me, I did not think I was going to like it. But by God, when you get that little knife in your hand, I think it's amazing. And I, I, there's, I'm not saying there's not a difference. There is a difference in this, this end working down to here. Because I like, as you go up, I like them better. <laughs> that's just, that's it. And I'm sure in your locking knives, you know, your modern knives, when you go from budget up to high end, and whatever your high end is, if that high end isn't much better and you don't understand why it costs more than this, well, then why are you buying this? I, I've got to the stage now where I actually know why this and this costs much more than this. I know why this costs more than this. I know why a GEC or a case costs more than this. And once you get that, it makes sense. And it does to me. But again, this is my opinion. I've gone on for nearly half an hour. I am so sorry. But I just feel as if sometimes, you know, back the homeboys. I hear that all the time. Back your home company. Yes, he's not getting it made in the country because he couldn't find somebody that could make it for the price that he needed to be. And he's got that. Hopefully in time, America will give him that ability to do that. So, Chris Reeves gets absolute... Cut to the quick all the time. People have always got something to say. Oh, it's clumbersome. It's an old, why are you doing the same thing over and over? Because he knows what he's put into that knife. And he knows when he gives it to somebody in hand, this, although a beauty queen, works. This is a working knife. Sabenza means work. And this is just stunning. Hollow grind done beautifully. Everything about this, the jimping, the slight raise to give you that push. You can push into it, but it's not a big high ramp like a Spyderco. It's just gently ramped, but the jimping is done so well, it works. And that's the details. That's the details that work. Um, so there you go. I've finished now, but I thank you very much. And G-Ball, I thought your video was brilliant and you spoke absolutely eloquently about modern slip joints you were spot on and i just wanted to do this that maybe maybe there's other people out there thinking well i'm not going to buy one of these because you know i can get this and, and these go up in increments because that's what they should be doing and it's just where you want to get off the bus this is the bus line and where you ever you want to get off what stop is where you get off and hopefully you enjoy the spot you're at because I'm enjoying the fact that when I pick that up, I can't find fault. Or let me tell you, I suppose there would be if I hunted, but what? I have, but I can't find any. So there you go. Take care, everybody. Paddy's away. Have a lovely rest of your night. Bye now. And if you've stuck with me all the time, hit that bloody subscribe button. It costs you nothing, but you'll get to know when this madness will come back on and into your life again. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Bye. -bye, bye.